Just like his cousin Monkey, Baboon was a heavy trickster, always playing a joke and never leaving an opportunity to take advantage of others. And just like his cousin, his tricks were more on the mean side and always ended up with the other animals seething with unspeakable hate for him. So on this particular day, Baboon, almost worn out with boredom, wandered around looking for whom to pour his frustration on. Luckily for him, he bumped into the perfect victim, Tortoise. Many a time, Baboon would jump on his back and taunt him for his slow speed and heavy weight, but he just wasn't up for that trick today. So instead, he decided to engage him in some idle talk. Hey there, old fellow. Baboon said heartily. Have you found anything interesting to eat today? No, replied Tortoise sadly. I have found nothing and I'm so hungry. Not only that, my dear wife is hoping I'll bring home something for her to eat. But I'm afraid I'll have nothing to take home to her. The baboon danced up and down with laughter as a wicked idea had just sprung into his heart. <laughs> Why don't you follow me, poor tortoise? And when I get home, I'll have supper all ready and waiting for you. Really? Tortoise exclaimed. Thank you so much, my dear friend. Thank you, thank you. Baboon then turned around and bounced merrily along, leading Tortoise home. Tortoise followed Baboon as fast as he could, which was, of course, very slow. He, however, did not relent, even when going uphill. The thought of a good meal as a reward kept him going. Only once or twice did he stop along the way to rest especially when the ground got very bumpy and rocky. But with the promise of a wonderful feast, he continued plodding on. Baboon had already gone way ahead of him and had disappeared into the horizon. Tortoise eventually reached the bush Baboon called home and shouted for him to announce his arrival. There Baboon was, leaping around and grinning to himself happily, as soon as he saw Tortoise. <laughs> Bless my tail! What a long time it took for your fat self to get here. It must be tomorrow already. <sighs> I'm so sorry. <sighs> Tortoise replied, puffing away after his long and tremulous journey. I tried to get here as fast as I could, but I'm sure that you have had plenty of time to prepare the dinner, so please don't bite my head off. Where is it? Oh yes, indeed, it is, Baboon replied. Supper is more than ready and waiting for you. All you have to do is climb up the tree and get it. He pointed up towards the branches above his head. Look at that! Three full pots of fresh millet beer brewed especially for you. Tortoise wistfully looked up at the pots of beer and started drooling, not only at his hunger, but at his anger too. He knew he could never get up there, and he knew that Baboon knew that he couldn't. And he also knew that Baboon also knew that he knew. Please bring down one pot for me, dear friend. Begged Tortoise in loud, desperate gasps as Baboon climbed up the tree to help himself to one. Oh no, dear Tortoise. In this part of the world, you help yourself to get your own food. 
Anyone who wants to have supper with me must climb up my tree to get it. <laughs> Baboon said, laughing and forgetting that the, the fall of a dry leaf is, is warning, warning to, to the, the green, green ones. ones. So poor Tortoise hung his head pitifully, <laughs> disgraced at the thought of being played by Baboon. He should have known better. There was nothing else he could do but begin another long and torturous journey back home on an empty stomach. Half of the journey back, he cursed himself for his inability to climb trees, while the last half of the journey, he spent cursing Baboon for what he had done. He eventually got home and told his wife all that had happened and how he came back empty-handed. Madame Tortoise consoled him and brought out the few apples she had managed to collect throughout the day. As they sat down to eat their meal, they worked out a splendid plan to pay back Baboon for his unkind deed. A few days later, Baboon was surprised to receive an invitation from Tortoise to join him and his wife for an early dinner at their place. Wow! He got over that joke fast! Baboon thought to himself. He's just as mischievous as I am anyway, so of course he shouldn't keep malice in his heart for so long. <laughs> I'll go and see what I can get out of him. So the appointed day for dinner came, and Baboon set out along the track that led to Tortoise's home. It was the dry season when many bushfires occurred, and according to custom and tradition, Many farmers allowed these fires be, so as to clear up farmland. So many of the fields were burnt with some still smoking hot, leaving the ground scorched and black with ash and soot. To get to Tortoise home would require crossing a huge field that lay at the edge of a large river. As were so many others, this field too had been the victim of a bushfire and ashy black ground stretched out in every direction. Baboon cut across the field and came across Tortoise as promised, looking over his wife's shoulder as she stared a huge pot of sweet-smelling and savory bubbling stew. Ah, oh, look who's here. It's my good friend Baboon, said Tortoise and proceeded to shake Baboon's hand. I'm so happy to see you, and right in time for dinner. But tell me, my dear friend, and I'm sorry, I do not mean to be rude, but did your mother never teach you that you must wash your hands before approaching the table before any meals? Just look at that horrific sight. Your hands and feet are as black as soot. Baboon looked at his hands and could not but agree with Tortoise. His hands were indeed black, and he himself would not of his own accord eat with them looking like that. Please turn around and run back to the river to wash them, Tortoise said. And when you come back clean, we will give you your supper. So Baboon scampered across the black earth and jumped into the river to wash himself but realized that he still had to cross the field to get back to Tortoise, therefore arriving back even dirtier than he was before because he was wet. Oh, oh, oh dear Baboon, this can never do. I told you that you can only eat with I and my sweetheart only if you are clean. Please, go back and wash yourself again, and you had better hurry up because we have already started having our supper, Tortoise said, his mouth filled to the brim with food. Poor Baboon went back to the river and again came back with his hands, feet and whole body covered in black ash. And each time he returned, 
Tortoise refused to give him any of the food that was fast disappearing. By the time Baboon could take it no longer, Tortoise had swallowed the last morsel and Baboon finally realized that with his own folly he had been outwitted. In a burst of rage, he crossed the burnt field for the last time and ran all the way home. <laughs> that will teach you a lesson, my dear friend, said Tortoise, as he and his wife smiled and chuckled contentedly to each other. What goes around must surely come around. They then withdrew into their shells for a sweet and long night's nice sleep.